Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we're going to work on the sticky call to action button. You might see it here right here in the middle and as we scroll, as soon as we hit that, it'll actually jump down and now you can do this little call to action down here. And then as you look at the rest of your page, it just hangs out there. When you go back up, it jumps back up. Contact us button right there. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I've got most of it coded out except for the actual uh, movement of everything. So first what we're going to do is just look at the HTML. Now the way I've got this is I've got everything in this hero button container. And let me just inspect this so you can kind of see what's going on. So as we come in here, we've got this hero button container and it's just this relative positioned area, 100% width. I have a fixed height on it with some padding. All right now inside that, I've got this wrapper and this wrapper container is a position absolute and then it's full width and 100% view height. So it goes all the way down here, and that's this right over this way. Now this hero button has two elements to it. First of all, it has an SVG, and then it has a span that has the, the words contact us. And if we were to jump inside here and look at this, uh, this link here, uh, I'll show you the CSS here in a second here, but the SVG is currently hidden and the span is visible. What we're gonna do is create a class, and that class will be called floating, I think is what we'll call it. Uh, when that class is applied, we're gonna switch these two so that the SVG becomes visible and the span goes invisible. And then we'll also move it down to the right position when we toggle that class on as well. All right, so let's jump into the CSS here, and you'll notice here's uh, what I was just chatting you through. So we've got this button container that's position relative, a fixed height, and then we've got a wrapper inside of it that's the rest of the content on the page there, 100% view height and um, position absolute. And then inside that position absolute wrapper is where we have this button. And right now the, the button, what I've got is just a positioned uh, display grid. Everything's in the center. I've got some basic things like a color, text transform, the color of the actual text, text decoration, border radius, kind of the things you'd expect on a normal button here. I've got this box shadow so that when you hover here, you got this kind of cool effect going on here. Um, again, it's, this is position absolute right now. And then I've got it calculated from the left and then halfway over. You could also do 50% left and then transform it over, which is probably the better way to do it, I suppose. Um, for bottom here, I'm saying I want 100% view height, which remember its parent container is 100% view height and then minus 70 pixels. So just up a little bit uh, there from the bottom. I've got a fixed width and height on this button, and that's because of the way we're going to toggle everything. I'm going to switch the width and the height when we just have the icon. Now, the span itself, you'll notice, is visible. That's the actual text here, and the font size we're setting to inherit. And that's because we're going to actually sw switch the font size to zero on floating. All right, lastly, you'll notice here that the hero button envelope, that's the actual icon here, is hidden. Currently, right now, I've got its width to zero and its height to zero. Now, what we're gonna do is toggle this floating class on, and when we do so, we're gonna make changes to this hero button and changes to the span. And that's all we're gonna do on the CSS. Now, I realized I went through that kind of fast, but because most of it's fairly basic, I wanna focus on the JavaScript and just kind of the way we're gonna apply this class. It's really the structure, I guess, that's important and understanding that we've got a relative container that's kind of the grandparent. The parent container is position absolute. The button itself is position absolute. And then when we come in here and add on that button, when we add that class floating, we actually want to change it to a position of fixed. We're also going to set a fixed width and height, and those will both be 70 pixels. We're going to calculate this left 100%, so that's the full width of the screen, minus 100 pixels. And because it's uh, 70, it'd be 30 off the right. Now, we, I guess we could also do 30 right as well, but that's just how I've got it set up here. Uh, bottom, we'll do 30 as well. And then we're gonna change the background color uh, to our primary variable, which is that blue color, that light blue color. We'll change the text to white. Now, because we've got the SVG as inline here, and we've got the stroke set to current color, when we change the color here, on the actual float on the, the parent element, it'll actually change the color of the SVG to that color of white. Lastly here, let's go ahead and back that box shadow off just a little bit. So we'll say one pixel, four pixel, uh, I guess we need a pixel there, four pixel, 10 pixel spread, three pixel for the kind of the, the blur, and then RGBA. 
because this is SAS, we can just add our variable and do like 0.2 and add the um, transparency just right in there with SAS. All right, now let's go ahead and let's switch this and add on this button the class of floating. That way we can start to see what we're doing. You'll notice it jumps right down there in the bottom. Now we need to make a few other changes to this hero button envelope. We're going to set the visibility to visible instead of hidden and the width to 40%. It was at zero, you might remember, and the height to 40% as well. And you see it pops right in there. For the span, we want to set the visibility to hidden. And then we're going to set the font size to zero. So it doesn't affect kind of the spacing of the button itself. Now, as we toggle that class on and off, you'll see I'll just take it off here. It's going to float uh, back and forth kind of between those two areas. So how do we actually trigger that class? Well, you could do a scroll event where you're saying like at this percent scroll from the top of the page, but then you're constantly firing that off all the time. So the easier thing to do is to add an intersection observer. And what we can do is have it watch something like this header, and whenever that leaves the screen, that's about the right time for this to jump down. And whenever it enters the screen again, we can have that button jump back up. So let's come over here to our sticky button.js. First of all, we'll console log it be working. All right, and let's see if it's working. Come down here to inspect, pull up the console, it be working. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna do a few things. The very first thing we wanna do is actually to grab this header itself. So we can say const hero header is equal to document.query selector hero header. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is to write the intersection observer. We'll say const move button intersection observer. You can call this whatever you want, but I'll name it something like that. And then we'll just say, use that new keyword and say new intersection observer. Now, an intersection observer can take two things. It can take a callback function and an options. We're not gonna pass any functions, but we will use a callback function. We'll just call it move button. For now, let's come up here and we'll say const uh, move button. And we're just gonna write this as an arrow function we will take in the event. And right now we'll just say watching. All right, now we've got the callback function written, we've got the intersection observer written, but now we need to call the intersection observer. And we're gonna call it on this hero header. Now, if you don't know about intersection observers, I did do a whole series on them, and I'll make sure to add a card and add uh, a link in the description if you'd like to watch that later. But first, we're just gonna call that move uh, button intersection observer, and then we're gonna say dot observe, and we'll pass it what we want it to observe, which is our hero header. So now if we come in here, you'll see it says watching already. As soon as we come there, when we pull off the screen here, it's gonna say watching again. When we come back on, it'll say watching again. So let's go ahead now, instead of call watching, let's call E, let's get the actual event. And you'll notice, let's zoom in here just a bit. And let me pull this up. You'll notice we get a bunch of things. In this zero index, we get is intersecting, true. That tells us it's on the page. Now if I scroll it off the page, Let's collapse this and open this next one that showed up. We're now getting is intersecting false. And this can be our trigger that we can use to trigger on and off that class. Let's zoom back out just a bit. Now using that is intersecting uh, identifier, we can actually write an if statement here. So we'll say, first of all, if it's not intersecting. So that bang on the front says, if it's not this, the E, remember it's the zero index and then dot is intersecting. If it's not intersecting, we'll just say console log not intersecting. Then let's go ahead and copy all this down here and we'll remove this bang to say now if it is intersecting, we want it to say is intersecting. So we'll clear this right now. It says not intersecting. Now it is intersecting. Now it's not intersecting. All right, so now let's go ahead and grab one more variable up here and you know what we need. We need that button. So we'll say hero button, and we'll say document.query selector, and we just called that hero button. And now what we can do is when it's not intersecting, we want to say hero button.classlist.add floating. Then we'll copy this down. And now we're going to say not add, but remove. 
And that is all she wrote. Now watch here, we come up this way. As soon as this header goes off the screen, it's gonna trigger that class floating. And now we can do whatever we want down here on the page. And as soon as we come back up, it floats right back up that way. I think I'm still zoomed out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So we come here, it floats down, come back up, it floats up that way. So this is a cool little feature if you wanna just keep your contact before your users, especially good for uh, like a, a landing page where really the call to action is just to contact you. All right, thanks so much for watching and happy coding.